Hey guys, so today we're taking another look at the Hacker F and the Porta Pack. We have our Hacker F out, we have our Porta Pack installed, and we are ready to play with our next feature. So today what we're going to be looking at is this fan right here. So being that this fan is remotely controlled, uh, it's using a radio based remote. So there's various types of wireless remotes, including infrared and radio based. Now this one right here is the one for that fan. And if you look and note on the back, it says 315 megahertz is the frequency. That's really helpful for us to use it. So what we can do at that point, and if you can't find a frequency on the back of your remote, what you'll do is you'll actually go to a website called FCC ID, and you'll be able to type in your device and from there, you'll be able to find the exact frequency that it operates on. And we're going to pick up where we left off. The other day, we did a video on a beginner's guide to looking glass. Today, I'm going to do basically a quick demo and some instructions on a basic replay. I wouldn't really call it an attack. It's my fan, uh, but it's a replay. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to first go where we left off, looking glass right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to open that. And what we've done is we've turned this down, taken the down arrows, which is this one right here, these down arrow, left arrow, right arrow, up arrow, and also the select buttons right there in the middle. This dial is how you're going to change different settings. So see what's highlighted. If I were to turn the dial, I'd be able to adjust that value. Now here is where you're going to want to set it to key fobs most likely. In my case, it runs at 315. So we can see that the red marker is right there. Now, where is it on the spectrum here? We have 315 somewhere around here. This is about 260. Over here is about 500. So we can do an estimate. Or another thing we could do is take out that remote and just press the button. And when you press that button, if you look close, you'll be able to see a little bit of a signal right there. Did you see it? Well, that is another way that you could help determine where we're operating on. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to scroll that marker over there and whoops. There we go. Now you need to make sure you have it on the marker setting first, of course, and then we're going to bring it down to 315. We could have done that to begin with, but I did want to show, since we did looking glass last time, I wanted to also show uh, the little bit that you can see on this. Now, it all depends also on the range. So if you're in a shorter range, you're going to be able to see that signal better. Uh, this is a little bit of a broader range, so it was a little harder to see it. But we can still see it by selecting that signal with the middle button right here. Now, at this point, when I press it, note what happens. So if I press this button again, see that? That was very clear. And if you note, to press it one more time, pressing it one more time, we can see it's just a slightly to the left. Now this isn't going to matter in most situations because it's already so close as it is. Uh, but what I can do is press those down arrows again, get that marker to show up, and then I could scroll over, you know, about where it was, close to it at least, and then uh, I could press it again. There we go, right in the middle. Uh, so we're right there on the line uh, where our signal is. And now at this point, what we could do is go over to capture. Now, if we wanted to capture some wireless commands and then replay them back, basically what this will do is store and record a copy of those signals. So if I wanted to say, create my own remote control, I could do that by capturing those signals of the buttons I wanted to be replayed back. And then I would use this replay feature over here. So we're gonna do a demonstration on that today. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the fan off completely and I'm gonna go into capture mode. And when I go into this capture app here, uh, we have to make sure first it's on the right frequency. And then what we wanna do is we wanna make sure we're on top of record. Did you see how I moved that little 
arrow down to the record. Now this middle button here is going to start the recording. Uh, so what we're going to do is try to do this with one hand as I use the remote. I'm going to do a series of buttons. First though, I want to hit the record button so I make sure I'm capturing all of this. So there we go, and you note it turned into stop. So now at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a few different buttons, change the fan speed a few different times, and you can actually hear it clicking up there. Okay. And then finally, we'll hit the light power button, and then another power button. Okay, so at this point what we've done is we've recorded those signals and we're gonna hit stop now. Now at this point our fan is off, we've recorded and captured those signals, but we want to replay them back so we don't have to find our remote control that day or whatever else reason you might want to store the signals of a wireless remote. We'll go over to replay and now at this point we're gonna load our capture. So I'm not sure which one it is, so I'm just going to simply guess at one. And you'll note that one says 433, so that was another thing I was looking at. Uh, so we're going to go back and we're going to try again, load a different one. Might be this one. Okay, there we go. It's the frequency we were working on. Uh, so now what we can do is note the fan and we're going to go over to, and another thing you could do, I could enable a loop, which means it would continually replay that signal, but I'm not going to do that because I want it to be obvious that it's working. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go over here and we're going to go ahead and replay exactly those buttons on the remote control. So I recorded the buttons on the remote control in a series of button presses. You could copy this for recording the signals of any wireless remote as long as you match up the frequency and it's not a rolling code. That's one thing you need to know. Older cars will work. Uh, newer cars have rolling codes, so it's not like the Canadian government is trying to scare everyone into thinking uh, that wireless devices like the Flipper Zero are going to be opening everyone's car. That's not the case at all. Modern hardware has security features like rolling codes that does add a little more challenge to it. Uh, so let's go ahead and get on with it. Let us play back those signals and see what happens. And there it goes. Power button is the first one. Change in speed. Another change in speed. And I'm not pressing any buttons on the remote. So you can see it. And finally that power button hit. So as you can see, this HackerF and Portapack is extremely handy. Oh, there it goes again. Uh, looks like I recorded another one. So really cool that the HackerF can do something like that. Um, and I wanted to do this as a demo today and uh, share it with you guys. So that's how you would do it. That's how you would do a replay with the HackerF and the Portapack. Hope this video was helpful to you. Make sure to share it far and wide, put it on social media, and share it with anyone who has an interest in the security of wireless devices and just general interest in tech in general. Really appreciate your help sharing the video. Uh, make sure to leave a comment if you had a question on something you saw and uh, let me know what you think in the comments and like the video. And don't forget to follow. Always makes a difference if you follow, share the videos, it really helps the channel out. So thanks guys and make sure to check out the blog at bmc.link slash politictech and also now on I2P if you have an I2P based browser setup. If you don't, check out my earlier tutorials and check out the blog at http colon slash slash right to privacy.i2p and i'll be back later soon with more on linux open source how to protect your security and privacy